finals match from Shanghai, China just a week ago, and yet again another world record has been broken, and this time it's 359 points. So on the red side here, we've got 7755A Sparking Boys, last year's middle school world finalists, and their sister team 7755B was actually world champion for middle school as well. And on the blue side, uh, 3, 2, 8, 7, 8, this match honestly just shows how insanely stacked this entire competition is. So as the match starts, we can see um, most of the early plays are done by red team here. And they stack really quick. Um, it's just been 10 seconds in the match and they've already gotten almost a full beam there. And then they finish that standoff goal and do that 110 point wide stack. And here... Uh, stem star finishes their beam as well and we can see uh sparking boys they're starting to do these stacks and they put it in that triangle goal right there while stem star over here finishes that uh cactus and then now they're both f entirely focusing on normal stacks um i think they're all going for two color snacks for now but we can actually see that um uh 7755a they actually get one uh three color stacks and then stem star of course goes for that uh triangle goal corner and now they're just going for even more and they actually miss a stack there and just at the very end of the match um 7755a does knock down a starting pin so that was a crazy match really fast paced a lot of stuff happening in this match so let's start breaking it down so I'm going to start with 7755A's robot. So they've had this design since around July. But what makes it so good are the constant changes and upgrades that they've made to this robot. So the first big change that I want to talk about is their hinged claw. So I'm going to zoom in a bit uh, just to avoid hole counting. Uh, but we can see that they actually have a hinge on their claw. So although it's not as obvious as the last robot that we reviewed, which is the Macau's robot, still gives them a really big advantage. So you can see that it's tilted and you can actually see that they have a pivot on this pin right here. And then this uh, 3x5 L-beam just hold their entire front claw structure. And what's really special about this hinge claw is that instead of using rubber bands, which are really frustrating they're really inconsistent and overall hard to tune they're using hard stops so you can see these two hard stops and these basically prevent the claw from swinging too high which is this hard stop right here so if it's like that uh, it's going to prevent it from tilting up too much upwards and this hard stop over here is to prevent it from going too low as you can see if it keep, tries to keep on going down then this hard stop will stop it so these two hard stops both help with tuning exactly where they want the claw to be. And of course, you can see here they use a smaller piece than this one by one over here. So hard stops are also pretty easy to tune because there's a lot of different pieces that you can use to change the sizes of these. And it's always going to be consistent, unlike rubber bands, which kind of wear out over time. And for any team running a 180 Mac, this is a huge upgrade because not only does it take off the stress of the driver lining up for regular stacks, it also completely solves the issue with the rubber bands. As I said earlier, weighing, wearing out or moving around, which if you remember was the main reason why I said I didn't recommend them in our last video. So another small change uh, that's really helpful is their pin aligners over here in the back. So at first, you might not notice what this structure over here is actually four but these are just some standoffs as you can see there's four standoffs connected to this one by beam over here and they stabilize the pins by reducing the sideways sway so normally because the fit of the pin into the beam is really loose it can move in all sorts of directions but these standoffs they're basically tuned perfectly so that um, the pin will always stay in the center and this means that the pins will only move forward and backwards, which makes stacking a lot more predictable. It's really simple, really effective. And especially if you don't want to spend a lot of time on that tuning of the 180 mech, but we can also see a special kind of a four bar. So if you notice here that their four bar here 
is actually tilted, right? And this is actually an offset four bar. And once it gets to the normal maximum height of the four bar, which is around over here, you can see the bottom of this beam over here. Um, you can see that the beam won't actually clear this pin. So it's just going to hit into the pin and not be able to stack on. But this tilt allows it kind of to ride up and then they can just drop it down. And this video by CJR Robotics explains how this offset four bar works really well. With small changes, you can get very interesting results. Connect the bottom bar a bit lower and get the opposite effect. Now back to the match. So there are three key things that Red Team 7755A does. Um, if we look over here, we can actually see that their liner flips up. So right there, you can see how their aligner just flips up like that. So originally it's like this, and then it goes up. So a lot of teams really struggle reaching this standoff goal here. So as you can see, their robot is actually completely pressed against that standoff goal. And if they had those aligners there, they would not have been able to go that far. And they actually barely put that pin on. You can see they have to drop and use some of the momentum to have the pin go on. And so with aligners, that's basically not possible. They basically just use a one pneumatic piston to flip the entire aligner up and it gives them a lot of extra reach. So super clean solution. And then over here, we can also see how the offset four bar works. So you can see the beam is kind of tilted and then it just rides up and drops down. So the next point that I want to talk about is these perfect triangle stacks. If we go to over here, after they're done with the cactus on the standoff wheel, they actually go for two uh, of these two colored stacks. And then they go ahead and go to the triangle goal and they just drop it in perfectly. So every single stack scored in the triangle goal is worth an extra 10 points, which adds up incredibly fast. So think about it. If you just manage two stacks in here, which is what they did, that's a 20 point bonus, which very possibly could be the difference between a good run and a world record run. And here's the thing, all 180 Max already have their pins based out the same way, right? Because they all have to score on the same beam. So the distance between these two pins must be the same for almost every 180 bot. So that means that most teams won't even have to redesign their claw or their robot or their pin spacing at all. And red team shows this perfectly. They just drive in and they drop stack in, nothing else happens, really clean. And also this is another thing that their flip up aligner that can be used for, which we talked about earlier. Um, so here there's actually a lot of obstacles. If you haven't seen the triangle go yet, here's an image of it. There's a lot of places where your aligner can possibly hit the triangle goal. And one of our Alliance members actually did a similar solution. So instead of having their aligner flip up, they had their aligner move back into the drive base. So same end product, just different ways of doing it. All right, so enough about the red team. Let's talk about the blue team. So 3287A robot. This is the first time we're seeing a close up of their design. So they've got a split claw, which we can actually see in action right over here when they start beam stacking. So their claws are split apart. Um, it's not joined together like a lot of the 180 bots that we've seen, which by the way, these split claw designs are starting to become a trend, not just in China, but also in the US. There's tons of these in our discord. But what really makes this robot really unique is the pneumatic alignment system. So it's not just some random aligners, but if you keep watching, even you can see how smoothly their claw just stacks over there. But what's really special is over here, you can see this pin is actually kind of tilted. And what they do is they use their alignment system and these claws, I would say, they kind of just hug the pin. And so not only does this ensure that it doesn't move at all when they're dropping the beam down, it also ensures that it's at the exact center of the robot. So this is a problem that a lot of teams I know have been struggling with. People have tried different strategies, but I ultimately, 
I think that this is going to be the best solution because it ensures that the stack is in the direct center of the robot because you're actually using you know pneumatic force to push the pin inside. And then you can see that the beam drops. The driver has no worries in the world at all of anything falling over. And so if you have an extra solenoid port left over or whatever, you can definitely consider adding this. And what they do here is actually another clever tactic that we've seen in China a lot, which is pushing uh, this bottom stack right against the wall. So if they push it against the wall, it prevents it from moving forward or backwards. It restricts it only to left and right. And then the pneumatic alignment system, it just forces it into a perfect position. So the against the wall strategy and the hugger mechanism basically guarantee that the stack will work and also takes a lot of stress off the driver's life, which this game is really driver oriented. But if you're like, oh, we don't have an extra solenoid spot and we have to add a new solenoid just to have this mechanism and we think it's not worth it. Let me show you another really cool uh, thing that this mechanism doubles as. So if we go over here, we can actually see that they're backing up into that yellow goal, right? So this pneumatic alignment mechanism, when it's in its open stage, it works along with the beam clamp as a secondary aligner to position these pins in the perfect position for this uh, yellow goal in the middle. Remember, stacks only count for the 10 point bonus if they're entirely inside of the X outline of the floor goal. And with this, blue team can align these stacks perfectly every single time. So again, they don't need to worry at all about these stacks not counting. And it saves a lot of time, even though they do have to turn around and do all that stuff. I've seen a lot of matches where teams have to carefully look at where the stack is and use one of their claws just push it into the perfect position and sometimes they push it too far or you don't push it enough and then they just waste five to ten seconds just on like one or two stacks which is absolutely diabolical 359 points is the new world record and to see a score like this so early in the season it's only september and that's absolutely insane so what do you guys think will the gc eventually change the field layout or scoring to balance things out Drop your thoughts down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the analysis. And make sure you're subscribed. We'll be covering every major match and all the tech in this season as it unfolds.